games can for the most part be boiled down into one of two categories. Games which end with a win state, and games which end with a lose state. Win state games are games with a very clear attainable goal, such as Super Mario Bros., which has an absolute endpoint, defeating Bowser and rescuing the princess. Then doing it again whenever a sequel comes out, which is every few years from now until the end of time. These are games with a very clear finish line compared to loose state games, which typically include puzzle games like Tetris or arcade titles like Space Invaders, where you play on and on until your inevitable and unavoidable defeat at the hands of teeny tiny pixelated aliens. Loose state games present a test of endurance and skill measured in time or a high score. How long can you last? How far can you go? How many points can you rack up? But occasionally a game comes along that ignores these categorizations entirely, offering neither a win nor a lose state. Case in point, Minecraft, which you cannot win or lose. It's entirely open-ended, with players setting their own goals, whether it's recreating fictional landmarks, digging down to the depths of hell itself, or, if you're me, just going out for a lovely walk in a brand new, procedurally generated world. In the digital realm, I am indeed a 50-year-old man. As much as people like to bang on about how innovative, unique, and rule-breaking this game is, it actually owes a huge debt to a game that came out 20 years earlier. That game is SimCity, which you already knew because that's the title of the video, but what you might not have known is that SimCity's designer, Will Wright, seen here looking a little but not a lot like Benedict Cumberbatch, though actually how great would it be to see a biopic starring Cumberbatch as Wright? Slip on some glasses, tweak the saturation, add some poster text. Oh yeah, yeah, this has Oscar bait written all over it. <clears throat> uh, anyway, Wright spent four years pitching the game to publishers who all turned him down because the game didn't have a win or lose state. And this is true, you can't finish a game of SimCity. In fact, the game doesn't really have a solid goal. The aim of the game is whatever the player wants it to be, whether it's building a self-sustaining city with a strong economy, stamping out crime, or just putting down some buildings so that Godzilla has something to trample on. But that kind of open-endedness wasn't the sort of thing publishers thought they could sell. In the end, it was a chance meeting with Jeff Braun, seen here demonstrating his camouflage technique, that led to the two men co-founding Maxis and publishing SimCity themselves. Over the next decade or so, Maxis put out a shit ton of Sim games, including Sim Earth, Sim Copter, Sim Ant, Sim Farm, Sim Golf, Sim Manatee, Sim Hat, Sim Health, Sim Life, Sim Lift, Sim Tree, Sim Park, Sim Dim Sum, and Simothy Dalton. And the fact that you're almost certain that I made up as many as five of those titles but aren't entirely sure which ones just goes to show how single-minded, perhaps to their detriment, Maxis had become by the mid-90s. None of these games had the success that SimCity had had, at least not until the release of The Sims in 2000, and none of them got around quite as much as SimCity did. It was ported to over 30 different systems, and I could quite happily sit here and spend 8,000 years telling you why each distinct port of the game is a fascinating, glimmering jewel in a sea of something or other, but I only want to talk to you about one port, and it is in fact arguably the only port of the game that matters. I mean, it's, you know, it's not, that's grossly reductionist, but that's a hell of a good hook, don't you think? I feel like I fucked up the word think at the end there. Released three years after the original home computer versions, SimCity for the Super Nintendo is notable because it was in fact developed by Nintendo themselves under license from Maxis. Consequently, this is a port of SimCity that is heavy on charm, and it's all the better for it. Previous ports felt sterile and lacking in flair. In fact, they felt more like applications than games, like city planning software that some poor Staples employee had misshelved. The interface matches the operating system of the machine the game is running on, the graphics are very simple and to the point, and the sound is minimal. And that makes sense, the game grew out of work Will Wright did building a map editor for his previous game, Raid on Bungling Bay, a strategy game for the Commodore 64 with a delightful name and the most harrowing box art you've ever seen in your life. But that left a window for someone to come in and develop a version of SimCity that would charm the pants off of you. And you know who's good at getting you out of your pants? Nintendo. At first glance, the SNES port does look more or less the same as its home computer counterparts, and it actually has a few downgrades from the original. Maps are pre-designed, with players able to select from one of a thousand prefabricated maps rather than the 
randomly generated terrain of the home computer versions. And as the game predates the release of the Super Nintendo Mouse by almost a full year, you're stuck using the D-pad, which is not the best way to play a cursor-driven game, as anybody who's played the SNES port of Lemmings will attest, but they make it work, with buttons to hotspot between the playfield and the menu interface, toggle the interface on and off, and scroll around the game map with ease. Besides that, the game boils down to the SimCity we all know and love, the construction, the statistics, the stress of keeping the budget balanced, but the key difference between other ports of SimCity and the SNES port is that there is a wheelbarrow's worth of charm and personality here. To begin with, the game relays advice, suggestions and information to you via a professorial character with ridiculous hair by the name of Dr. Wright, guess who he's named after, who offers support, suggestions and encouragement as you grow your city. He'll even congratulate you on hitting certain and landmarks, a far cry from the other ports where the most acknowledgement you'll ever get for your successes is a brief on-screen message that's gone just as quickly as it arrives. But the Super Nintendo version treats these milestones as accomplishments to be celebrated, and it does so with a little bit of a fanfare and a reward. Sometimes your choice of a theme park or a casino, maybe a house for the mayor, which by the way is you, and later, if you're really good, a statue of Mario himself. I've never actually seen this statue myself because I've yet to reach my full potential as a human person. The charm doesn't end there though, oh no. The game has a wonderful soundtrack by composer Soyo Oka that shifts from a gentle piece as you first start building your city to something more indicative of a city on the grow. Once you hit certain population milestones, the color palette shifts with the seasons of the year, which is a very simple touch, but just adds so much flavor and a real sense of the passage of time. And if you get bored of your city and decide to call down a monster attack, it is none other than Mario's arch nemesis Bowser, who will stomp across your meticulously designed design Micropolis, because Nintendo made this game and they can do whatever they want with it. From the moment you load up the Super Nintendo version of SimCity, you can already feel something magical about to happen. The game immediately sets a mood and tone. It feels metropolitan but gently whimsical, taking itself seriously but still having the confidence in its slightly sillier edge to communicate with you via an avocado-haired simulacrum of Will Wright. But did you know? Oh. Oh, well, we're just... Lifting that wholesale from from Mikey, are we? Am, am I just entirely out of original ideas? Am, am I out of original ideas? Are we are we done with those? Are we out of those? I am. Uh, okay. All right. SimCity isn't the only Nintendo game Dr. Wright has appeared in. He's most notably appeared as an assist trophy in Super Smash Bros. Brawl and Smash Bros. for the Wii U, but Legend of Zelda fans will recognise the character for his cameo appearance in Link's Awakening on the Game Boy, where he was renamed Mr. Wright due to his obsession with writing letters to pen pals who never write him back. Kinda sad. Another character closely resembling Dr. Wright appears in Oracle of Seasons and again in the Minish Cap, only this time the character is named Dr. Left. The character was deemed interesting enough to merit pulling from the confines of a city simulator and dropping into one of Nintendo's flagship franchises, and I don't think that's an accident. People gravitate towards Nintendo games. They buy entire systems just so they can play the newest Mario Kart or the next Zelda. These games matter to people. A big part of that is the level of care and attention and love that they pour into each game, and SimCity is no different. Nintendo took a game with zero personality and gave it one, like a nerdy girl getting a makeover in literally any movie from the 90s. That's what they excel at. They make games with personality, games you want to sit down and spend time with, games you reminisce about and revisit years after you first played them. SimCity is one of those games. SimCity is one of my games, one of my family's games, and though we had the Amiga version of the game when I was a kid, though it's the Amiga version that I'd sit and watch my mother play for long stretches, that is not the version that I come back to when I want to revisit that chapter of my life or feel a connection to a parent who is no longer here. I throw on the Super Nintendo version, because while the Amiga version feels familiar, the SNES version feels... like home. The SNES version is the one that celebrates my progress as I play, even though we both know there's no end goal, no exit strategy, that I will play until I decide to do something else, and the next time I load up the game, I might not even bother loading the city I'd saved the last time I played. The other versions of SimCity are glorified spreadsheets, but the SNES version is a game. It knows it's a game, and it knows it's a game that you'll play for as long as you want, so it does its best to make that experience a pleasant and supportive one. 
There are no shortage of remakes and sequels in this series featuring varying levels of complexity and simulation, but the SNES version, despite its relative simplicity when compared to the newer games, is the one that I and others keep coming back to because it's the one that feels the most fun to play. There's a reason this is the version that got re-released on the Wii. It's no surprise that the director of this port, Hideki Kono, seen here reciting his favourite Smash Mouth lyric, is the lead producer of the Mario Kart franchise, a franchise with an unerring pull that single-handedly caused a 660% boost in the sale of Wii U consoles the week it was released in the United Kingdom. This is a man whose career spans multiple Nintendo games, including Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Story, Luigi's Mansion, and almost the entire Mario Kart franchise stretching all the way back to the very first one. These are all games which people remember fondly and affectionately, with the possible exception of Yoshi's Story. But even that has its fans who think of the game with fondness and affection. That's a sensibility that Hideki Kono brings to all of the games he's directed and produced, including Nintendo's port of a bland but addictive little city simulator, turning it from a game where you want to succeed at making your city work to a game that celebrates those successes with you. Even though the SNES port of SimCity is not a game you can win, it's a game that makes you feel like a winner when you play it well. And that is truly magical. Two episodes in one year? This is un this is unheard of. There's another episode in a couple of weeks. It's gonna be looking at Mega Man Anniversary Collection, and then we have episodes coming up looking at Marble Madness for the Game Boy Advance, and Final Fantasy VI, also for the Game Boy Advance. If you enjoyed this video, do please consider liking it, sharing it. Please subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to subscribe to the parent channel, Chainsaw Suit Original, which has movies with Mikey, Local 58, and all the other stuff that you love that we put out. I'm gonna stop talking now, but I'll see you on the next one.